Welcome to the new episode of The Context. We are applying our knowledge, passion and creativity to addressing the global pandemic in so many different ways. It is really exhilarating to see that a common enemy is uniting so many people around the world. Open source initiatives are uh, creating medical devices that anybody can download and uh, uh, 3D print in order to help what already is available in the official medical supplies with alternative solutions. And regulators are waking up to the possibility of a faster accelerated approval process so that these uh, novel solutions can also enter more traditional production lines. This collaboration, of course, is possible thanks to our global communication infrastructure. It wouldn't have been possible just 50 years ago, let alone 100 or 200 years ago. And I believe there will be nobody who will say, oh, we have to respect the rights of the virus. Let's make sure that uh, as we combat it, we are not too extreme. Uh, we will combat it and we will keep on the fight united against this enemy. It is a little bit like an alien invasion. Uh, we cannot communicate with the virus. Uh, its goals are completely different than ours. Uh, and uh, it, our lives today pretty much resemble the Hollywood uh, dystopias that uh, we are seeing in so many movies. But uh, rather than spaceships uh, hovering uh, uh, over our cities uh, from New York to Milan and Seoul and elsewhere, uh, we have uh, the invisible enemy all around attacking us without spaceships that uh, we can identify and photograph and, and uh, show on our newscasts. The initiatives uh, are of many different kinds, of course, and uh, I am proud and happy to be uh, participating also in uh, EXO World, which is a three-day extravaganza, a digital summit that brings together uh, experts from many different fields as we debate not only what can be done from the point of view of uh, uh, social distancing or um, contact tracing or other preventative measures that are aimed to control how the pandemic develops uh, through time in order to make sure that as uh, little pressure develops on the uh, uh, healthcare infrastructure of uh, any given region as possible, but also uh, it deals with uh, what comes after. How can we address the challenges of our society that have been brewing and accumulating tension for many decades and that the pandemic actually uh, brought to the surface? We have become more aware of how uh, urgent it has become to radically reform our societies. And traditionally, these kinds of uh, um, tensions would break through the very blunt but effective uh, tools of uh, wars, where whoever won uh, was right. And uh, of course, uh, anybody else would be dead uh, with no recourse. And uh, the new uh, socioeconomic infrastructures uh, could be born of the clean slate uh, that uh, a war would create so that uh, the experimentation of putting together the pieces necessary uh, would be happening together uh, with the rebuilding physically of the societies destroyed by war. These days we are in times of thermonuclear weapons and of course we cannot uh, make recourse uh, to wars and revolutions to uh, clean the slate. Not only because uh, that would uh, create uh, destruction on an unprecedented scale. 
also because we are so much more aware uh, of uh, the suffering uh, on a global scale all over the planet that uh, uh, every human being would uh, uh, would go through uh, th those who would die of course by the hundreds of millions if not the billions but also uh, the uh, traumatic experience of the survivors uh, either because they suffered it uh, directly or because uh, they gave the orders that led uh, to the destruction of so many lives. So obviously uh, we don't want war and uh, we are avoiding war in, in so many ways. Uh, I, for example, in my life uh, have not lived uh, through war and I feel so uh, lucky uh, thanks to that. And the opportunity is uh, to make sure that we learn how to substitute an existing socioeconomic infrastructure with a new one without recourse uh, to the destruction that war causes. So the pandemic in this sense is a huge opportunity and we must take advantage of it. Um, the limits of adaptability of our governance structures uh, are uh, definitely uh, overtaken by the jolting changes that uh, the pandemic is causing. Whether it is uh, $2 trillion uh, that uh, the US administration uh, decided would be made available to businesses and individuals, which, by the way, if uh, you make the calculation, is enough for about a week or two uh, in um, uh, postponing uh, bankruptcy uh, of uh, uh, those who don't have uh, uh, alternative sources of, of, of income or, or wealth that they can liquidate in order to survive as a business or uh, as a family, or whether we are talking about uh, the, the, the European uh, uh, agreements uh, that are still uh, in process of being hammered out as I'm recording this, these are the last uh, recourse of the previously existing uh, financial system that uh, we recognize cannot be uh, sustained because the accumulation of debt is in turn predicated on our ability uh, to uh, increase the uh, production uh, of goods that in turn destroy the environment. We have to uh, recognize that uh, the process uh, cannot go on forever as a consequence the debt that is being created under the existing financial system is not going to be repaid. And as a consequence, uh, whatever um, buyer of that debt is expecting a return on the risk uh, in the form of an interest that is paid um, is not uh, going to find what uh, uh, is expected. Now, one of the advantages of these extraordinary times is that many dogmatic points of view can be swept aside and things that were unthinkable become testable, possible. We can implement either on a local scale or, or on a global scale completely novel approaches to our problems. The advantage is that Contrary to natural laws where um, Newton's gravity doesn't stop because you uh, won't believe in it anymore, so many of the laws of our economy and finance are just the result of mutual agreements to believe in them. And if we stop, they will disappear and new possibilities will open. We have to be creative, courageous, and we have to lead by saying out loud those crazy ideas according to the previous uh, uh, judgment that now become 
the natural source of our own solution, the salvation of our civilization. Entropy is definitely not on our side. It took us 10,000 years to achieve what we have achieved, emancipating and empowering billions of individuals, overcoming the uh, relentless uh, suppression of feudal systems, uh, allowing the uh, sources of uh, awe and uh, wonder in the world to come from reason and science so that uh, anybody can educate themselves, uh, understand why they want to build a community that uh, uh, can thrive. But if we stop believing this process, we will tumble back with uh, uh, local minima being easily achieved through despotic regimes, through repressive uh, uh, legislative uh, systems, through so many suboptimal approaches that will uh, stultify the lives and the opportunities of billions of people if we do not pay attention. In that sense, the pandemic must be also uh, a reason for alarm. We must not let uh, the crisis create the, the premise of uh, oppressive futures where the default is that uh, the state of your residence uh, can tell you that you must stay at home, that you are not allowed by law to move uh, freely. We must uh, preserve uh, so many different kinds of freedoms, including the freedom of movement. Now, of course, we cannot exercise freedoms when we are putting others in danger, and that is the challenge of fi finding the right balance between what was possible before in our necessary ignorance as we would uh, go around uh, flying happily all over the planet infecting people and that is one of the fundamental challenges that we are facing how can we correctly balance what are the new ways that we have to manage our degrees of freedom from that of movement to that of data privacy to so many others with the realities of our newborn knowledge. Previously, we would uh, happily fly around in our total ignorance of uh, what kind of infections uh, we would bring here or there. And now that we realize that we cannot go back, we have to act on that newfound knowledge. And as a consequence, we have to incorporate it in how we structure our activities and our societies. That is the way to go, to leverage that knowledge and to build from there. The increasing acceleration of the changes that uh, the pandemic uh, brought in our societies is an example of the jolting technologies that we are facing. The question is, since we have seen the rapid breakdown of our social infrastructure, in this case specifically the health care uh, infrastructure on one hand and to an increasing degree uh, our uh, financial and economic system underlying it, how can we prevent similar disruptions from occurring when additional jolting changes are going to present themselves and unavoidably wreak havoc around our uh, activities uh, all over. What lessons can we learn from these jolting changes as we unavoidably going to face new ones? How will artificial intelligence, quantum technologies and other jolting technologies disrupt our socio-economic system, our infrastructure of uh, the labor system, of uh, our uh, belief in what humanity can achieve and what its role in the world. Can we address uh, those future threats by 
learning from what is happening today? Can we prepare for the changes that once again will push each of us individuals as well as our communities beyond our limits of adaptability? I think those are the fundamental questions that we have to face as we learn about the pandemic and we learn every day new things in epidemiology, in uh, pathology, in uh, uh, clinical studies, in meta studies of how the merits of uh, given scientific results must be controlled and compared with other uh, scientific results in order to understand if there are faulty methods that are being applied. And as a consequence, we have to disregard the conclusions of that particular publication. They are not necessarily fake news, but still, we are not a critically trusting a source just because it is scientific. So we have incredible opportunities if we are alert, aware, and if we communicate with each other, as I am doing, uh, with uh, a, a, an effort that brings a great joy. Also because I am receiving a lot of feedback and a lot of questions from so many of you. Uh, you may have seen that I have started a daily live streaming experiment. Searching for the question live airs at uh, 7 p.m. CET, 1 p.m. ET, 10 a.m. PT each day. Either I am talking about what are the tools of software and hardware that I am using for putting together the context as well as SF. TQL, uh, but also I have guests from all over the world uh, that uh, bring uh, uh, their experiences, their uh, hopes, uh, their uh, passions as we have a conversation about this crazy science fiction world uh, where we are living. So uh, please join me uh, over there as well. Uh, I am also in the process of uh, restructuring my Patreon page, introducing new opportunities for interacting value creation, value exchange. We don't know what the new uh, uh, financial and economic system is going to look like that we put in place. Uh, for the moment, we are still using money in order to buy food, pay rent, and uh, uh, reward each other for uh, what we bring uh, into society. So if you uh, believe that uh, what I am doing uh, creates value, uh, feel free to uh, become a supporter uh, on Patreon. If you already are, uh, I am very grateful and I will see you, but at least uh, speak to you uh, next week in this uh, uh, new episode of The Context. Thank you.